Hello everybody, let's do some math for fun. And today, I would like to talk about how to add fractions. Adding fractions usually gives most of students a difficult time at first, right? So let me take a look um, of this topic for today. I want to make sure that everybody knows how to add fractions correctly. Let me give you guys an example first. Let's say I have 11 over 20 plus 7 over 10. And how do you add fractions correctly? Many of the teacher, I think your teacher will tell you that we need to make sure that they have the same denominator first. But in this case, unfortunately, we don't, right? So we have to first look for the lowest common denominator, the lowest common multiple of 20 and 10. And if you think about it, 10 times 2 will produce 20. So in this case, the LCD is equal to 20. That means I'll need to change the first fraction to something over 20, plus the second fraction the same, something over 20. But for the first fraction, it's already 11 over 20, so I just need to put the 11 down right here. But for the second fractions, well, I have to think about 11, uh, 10 times 4 will be 20, 10 times 2 will be 20. I need to do that on the top though, so 7 times 2 is equal to 14. And the interesting thing is this, once we have the same denominator, when we add fractions, you just need to add the top, 11 plus 14, which is 25. And then the denominator stays the same, the 20 stays the same. You just write them down. You don't do anything with the 20, just rewrite it. And one more step, you are not done yet. The teacher will tell you to always look for your result and try to reduce whenever it's possible. In this case, we have to look for a number that goes into 25 and 20 evenly. Uh, in this case, 5 works. So I'm going to divide the top by 5, divide the bottom by 5. And then 25 divided by 5, we get 5. Over 20 divided by 5, we get 4. We are not done yet, because sometimes we have 5 over 4. We need to write that as a mixed number. This is a proper fraction. So 5 over 4, we can also write it as 1 and 1 over 4. Phew, so complicated, right? How many steps is there? The LCD, and then you add, and then you divide, and then you do the mixed number. A lot of steps, right? And we learned this as a kid back in 3rd or 4th grade. However, uh, let me take a look of another mathematical object. Let's say I want to do... Uh, matrices and I want to talk about adding matrices. So what's matrices? You can think about it. matrices is a box which there uh, are numbers inside, a bunch of numbers inside. So let me give you an example that says 3, 2, 1, 5, 7, 0, 8, 1, 2. And then let's say I want to add a, another matrices that say 1, 5, 2, 1, 2, 1, 3, 0, 8, 9. And let me pause here for a minute. Let me ask you guys this question. Which one do you think is more complicated? Matrices or fractions? I think matrices are more complicated, right? Because I have nine numbers right here and then plus nine numbers right here. Compared to fractions, I have one, two, three, four. Technically, I only have four numbers when we have um, these two fractions. But how do you add matrices? This is how. So you still have a box of numbers. And there's actually nothing tricky at all when you're adding matrices. Look at the first number in the first box and then the first number in the um, second box, matrices. So 3 plus 1 is equal to 4. That's all you need to do. 3 plus 1 is equal to 4 and then you put that in the final box, the final matrices. It's 4. That's all. And then continue with the rest. 2 plus 5 is 7. 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. And then move to the second row. 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus 1 is equal to 8. 0 plus 3 is equal to 3. And then third row. 8 plus 0, it's 8. 1 plus 8, it's 9. 2 plus 9, it's 11. Nothing tricky at all. I pretty much just do 9 addition questions right here. That's all. I didn't need to look for the common denominator. I don't need to multiply. I don't need to divide or whatever that I needed to do right here. So adding fractions is such a complicated operation. And we learned this as a kid. right? This is so hard. And we learned this when we were a kid. Right? However, you learned about matrices when you are in high school or college. And this is so easy, right? This is so easy. Learned it in high school and sometimes maybe you learned it in college. It's so easy. This gives me a question though. As you can see that matrices looks so complicated, but the operation is actually so easy. And fractions lose so easy, but the uh, operations, the procedure, is so complicated. I have a question for you. Why can't we just do... So let me take this for example again. So if you have 11 over 20, I want to add it with 7 over 10. Why can't we just say, okay, let's look at the top and top. 
11 plus 7 is equal to 18. And then over 20 plus 10 is equal to 30. Well, why can't I just do that? And if you have done this on your test before, you will always be marked wrong. I don't know why that this is not the case when we are talking about fractions. Why can't we just do this and this seems so pleasant and then as a kid, I would like to do this rather than doing this, right? Okay, if you want to do this, this is fine, but there's a situation though. Let me give you another question to illustrate. So, let's say uh, you just took a test recently. You took a multiple choice test, which contains two parts. Contains two parts. And let's say you took uh, part A on Monday, and part A, there are 20 questions. 20 multiple choice questions and you got 11 correct and then on Tuesday you took the part B there are 10 questions so they are similar questions but the teacher just want to break down into um, two days you got 7 correct on Tuesday on the second part and the question is of course what is your overall grade right that's the question that everybody would like to figure out so let's see how do we do this. So let's look at part A. I have 20 questions and I got 11 correct. And the grade for that will be 11 over 20. 11 correct out of 20 questions. So 11 over 20. So let me make a note right here. This is part A, the grade from part A, right? And for part B, I have 7 correct out of 10 questions. And that's exactly 7 over 10. So this is the grade from part B. And what are we going to do with this? What are we going to do with this? I need to make sure that I have the grade from part A together with the grade from part B. Let me write down, together with the grade from part B. And I'm just going to put them together, right? I just need to put the grades together. And then, if you think about this carefully, in this situation, to find out the final grade, your overall grade, so this is the place for overall grade overall grade what we need to do is take a look of the top 11 plus 7 which is 18 over 20 and the, tw uh, the 10 which gives us 30 so let me make a note this is 11 plus 7 and how do we get the 30 this is 20 plus 10 so wouldn't this be much easier if we are talking about how to add fractions and I think I'm really happy with this and you are adding fractions, right? Doors, 